one of the ways to, you know, go ahead and uh, do a project, uh, help out uh, small, small businesses, and uh, at the same time, get some uh, experience going on. So a uh, round of applause for everyone for, uh, for all your hard work. Uh, all right, I'll go ahead and uh, start it off. Uh, welcome to the Power Up uh, Final Showcase. Uh, this is the, the final last stretch. A nice, uh, we're gonna have a lot of uh, good presentations today for, uh, for from all the teams. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, start it off with, uh, we're gonna start it off with an icebreaker. So uh, for this icebreaker, we are going to uh, ask uh, if uh, you can have, if you can have an an unlimited supply of one thing for the rest of your life, uh, what would it be? So you can uh, go ahead and uh, type it out on chat or uh, hold a thought. Maybe, may, maybe you want to, you know, raise your hand uh, it, after we'll give it like three, four minutes. Oh, all right. We already got some going. Okay. Uh, let's see. What do we have? Water. That, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, banana, banana milk. All right. Chapstick. You can, you can, can, can never not have uh, non uh, dry lips. <laughs> uh, oats, red bean popsicles. I've never tried that. Are they, how good are they, uh, Tiffany? Uh, they're really good. <laughs> they're really good. Oh, yes. Oh my God, that's a, a good recommendation there. Thank you. So can we say money? <laughs> uh, unlimited supply of money. I, I don't know. I think uh, they kind of economics doesn't work that way, right? Uh, uh, blendy smoothies from Andriana. Yakult, ooh, we got two Yakults, all right. Uh, if not money, one, one kilogram gold bars. Uh, where would you uh, stack them, uh, Alex? Was that Alex? Where would you stack your uh, one kilogram of uh, 24 karat gold? A basement, <laughs> perfect. Haircuts, unlimited amount of haircuts. That is, that is good because uh, I've, I haven't gone uh to get a like haircut outside it's always been at home i didn't know like the, the prices of those things the, the price of of getting a haircut nowadays ridiculous uh, unlimited basement <laughs> to, to go with the unlimited uh, gold bar maybe we can all uh, join together with all of our unlimited items someone say pasta juna juna with the pasta uh, what kind of what kind of pasta are we going for do I have to choose though? Like, what if I want a variety? Fair, fair choice. I think I, I think the the question allows that <laughs> to uh to have unlimited uh, of all pastas. <laughs> uh, let's see. Anything else? World peace. I, yep. Unlimited world peace. That would that would be perfect. F Five hundred euro bills. <laughs> oh man. So no, no of other other kinds. Like you can't you can't break a five hundred euro bill. You just you just stick with it. Uh, that's that's perfect. A chia seed snacks. Oh wow. Very very good answers from everyone. Thank you so much uh, for uh, giving your. Uh... Oh how about how about me? What, what would I have a limited amount? Uh, a limited amount of uh, of a, a data cap. Uh, I think but like not not have to pay for for internet and it'll just be like unlimited supply for for everyone you know yes i am a a make it a public utility type of guy you know <laughs> um free information for all okay uh thank you all for uh for doing the the icebreaker with me that was uh that was nice that was uh, that was fun um so i'm gonna go ahead and introduce uh, myself and then every everyone else from the power up uh, coordinators will introduce themselves I am, uh, my name is Sergio. I am uh, a part of uh, Design Co. I am in, I am a, uh, in from the CEC group. So uh, nice to meet you all. Hi, Megan. I'm another power coordinator and I'm a creative director for Design Co. Hi, I'm Samantha. I am also a community engagement coordinator with Sergio. Hi, I'm Juna. I'm also one of the power coordinators, and I'm one of the visual and brand designers at Deco. Hi, I'm Tiffany. I'm the media coordinator at Deco.
sorry, I was muted. <laughs> um, so uh, next up uh, for our agenda for today, we're, we had our opening remarks and then uh, we'll go straight into the team presentations. And this is the order that we will go. We'll go for uh, Blandy's first uh, and then for Licious, uh, then Cut and Dry. And next will be Kinney Coffee and then uh, Cafe X. And then we'll have closing remarks uh, there at the end. Awesome, thanks Sergio. So I'll be doing um, a quick opening remarks. Kind of wanted to tell you guys a little bit more about Power Up, um, if you guys aren't too familiar with the program. So we originally started this last year as Level Up. Um, UCSD Design Co. Um, started Level Up for students who weren't able to get internships due, the due to the pandemic or um, to help those students whose internships got canceled due to the pandemic. Um, so just kind of a design program to help uplift students during you know, a very hard time. So Level Up, this is kind of the mission statement for Level Up. Level Up connects motivated design students with industry professionals to develop innovative solutions for real world challenges. Um, and a little bit about Level Up. There were 20 students split into, I think, five teams, and each team had two design mentors from the industry. And then the Level Up team um, made seven workshops, you know, ranging from how to talk to mentors to um, how to build your UX case study. So we kind of took Level Up and we leveled it up into Power Up. Um, so Power Up is a 10 week remote design and marketing diversity, equity, and inclusion program partnering with BIPOC or minority owned small businesses. So this year we had 25 students also split into five teams. We had 14 design and marketing industry mentors. We worked with five small businesses. So our students got to work with some real clients. And we also had 14 workshops nine of which were led by our wonderful mentors. And we also had three DEI events where we got to talk to a recruiter from Sony and then learn more about DEI in the industry with Sony Ujima and ServiceNow. Thanks, Sam. Okay, now it's the time that everyone's been really waiting for for these past 10 weeks. We're gonna go straight into the team presentations now. So going over the order of presenters one more time. First up, we're going to have Blendies, who's going to go up till, or is going to start at 610. And then we have Ferlicious, Cut and Dry, Kinney Coffee, and then Cafe X. So we have around an estimated time range of 10 to 13 minutes for presentations. And right after, we'll have five minutes for open floor feedback. Okay, so first up, introducing Blendies, we have our power uppers. We have Nicolette, who's the UX designer and also part of marketing. We have Odie, who is the UX researcher, Tracy, who's a visual designer, Rose, a web builder and visual designer, and Adrian is a marketing and content strategist. And then going over our mentors, we have Lavanya, who's a senior product designer at ServiceNow. And then we have Terea, who's a UI designer at Google, and Marcy, who's product marketing manager at Sony Ujima. So we're going to leave it up to Blendies now. Um, hello, everyone. So we are the Blendies team. Um, so today we'll go through what we have done for Blendies from research to design to marketing. Um, so in the 10 weeks, we were a partner with Blendies, a black owned juice and smoothie bar that started in 2011 as a fundraiser for a football team. From its growing success, Blendy became a business with a mission to drink healthy and be healthy. And they believe that shopping healthy shouldn't be expensive. And their custom uh, customizable menu includes smoothies, tea, acai, and more. In our meeting with Blendy stakeholders, we identified the problem that even though blend, uh, business for Blendies is strong, a lacking online presence and no way of tracking business metrics left Blendies with little room for um, customer expansion. So given the problem, we spent 10 weeks partnering with Blendies with the goal to build a focused online presence through facilitating um, customer engagement. 
So we went about the creation of a, a brand new website, a new online ordering system, and a search engine focused marketing campaign. From the beginning, we managed to come up with two how might we statements that will continue to guide us throughout our 10 weeks in both website design and marketing. So the two statements were how might we revamp the website and marketing campaign such that Bundy's can expand their customer base and stand out from its competitors. And how might we create an engaging experience for Blendy's customers while conveying um, Blendy's mission? So now we'll jump into website design process where we start with website design um, with secondary research and user research. So we begin the research process with observations of current website and found some notable, um, notable need for change, with the most significant one being that the Blendy's website is currently only one singular page. Um, and with that in mind, we continue on to user research in order to um, understand customer behavior and needs. Uh, we primarily wanted to know what users thought about the current Blendies website, as well as what their habits were in terms of um, visiting similar business websites. And from our survey uh, for non-Blendies customer, we gathered 13 responses in which we found that um, users browse similar websites for menu and pricing. The current Blendies website lacks product image and visual elements, and the one-page setup made navigation more difficult. Um, then we conducted, uh, we conducted market research by doing competitive analysis, looking into established uh, comp competitors for insights on both website functionality and branding. From our competitive analysis, we learned that Monday's current website needs implementation of features such as navigation bar and online ordering is a feature present in all analyzed competitors. These insights will help us uh, brainstorm our design goals later on. After conducting uh, research on potential users and market research, we got a couple of ideas of how we would want to proceed, but we felt that we also needed to understand Blendy's specific customer base better and acquire, acquire some opinions and insights from them. So we sent out a customer specific survey with the help of Blendy's themselves. And from that survey, we found that most users visited Blendy's website in the past for menus and prices. And most users would or might use the online pickup service if offered. And finally, Blendy's customer service was one of their core strength. Moving on to the next phase of our project, we'll now be going over the UI UX and visual design. So my team and I solidified our three main design goals based on our secondary research and user research conducted earlier. First, we wanted to provide balance Blendies with a website rebrand by refreshing their current visual language and showcasing more of their personality and what they represent within the website. Second, we wanted to house more functional navigation by ensuring that new users and users with the goal of placing online orders could find what they're looking for with ease. And lastly, we wanted to add more features and interaction to add some spice to the experience and allow users to explore more of Blendies offerings such as online ordering, catering, cleanses, and more. And with these goals in mind, in conjunction with the user feedback we synthesized, we create a focused feature list to highlight what features are most important to users and to also base our future wireframes and prototypes off of. So this includes redesigning a more visual menu, incorporating online ordering, a site map, and contact forms. Starting with the home and menu page, we have our wireframes that we quickly drafted to explore potential layouts. From the get-go, we knew that we wanted to separate the website into easily digestible chunks, as opposed to Blendy's previous one-page website. This will allow for more organized navigation, help the business track user traffic, and aid in the overall user experience. On the bottom left image, you can see the home page wireframes where we have the hero image, call to action buttons, product placement, and more. While on the top right, you can see the menu wireframes where we play around with the categorization of menu items, single page versus multi-page menus, and more. Moving on, these are the wireframes for the contact and about us page. Starting from the left, you can see the contact wireframes, which include a message request form, catering information, location phone number, and more. While on the right, you can see the about us wireframes, which experimented with layout and organization, and showcasing their core values and benefits. 
Using the ideations from our wireframes, we created low and mid fidelity mockups that focus on incorporating the feature list that we curated. And we developed four main pages for our website to house these features, home, menu, contact, and our store. For iterations and two usability tests later, we used our testing insights to inform our high fidelity designs. And here you can see our landing page. While Blendy's original landing section consisted of just their cache line, a button to their menu, and their logo, this was the only source of color throughout their site. So for our redesign, we wanted to make Blendy's homepage more visually engaging in order to retain users' attention and give them more information about what Blendy's has to offer. To do that, we included multiple actionable features for, item, for users to interact with, such as the online ordering button, the most popular menu list, and Blendy's story and location. Overall, the homepage provides quick clicks to the rest of the page and gives an overview of Blendy's as a business. Because Blendy's original site only had one page, they did not have a navigation bar, which made it hard for them to include detailed information about what they offer without trapping the user in an endless vertical scroll. To allow for more website content and organization, we incorporated a navigation bar and a site map that displays each of Blendy's main pages. And we have a drop down menu of each page section so that users could easily search for the information they want, whether it be about the menu, catering, or store hours. Since Wendy's is a business that sells drinks and food, a visual menu was a feature that we put the most focus on. Wendy's original site also included their menu, but it lacked images that could deter potential customers because, hey, people eat with their eyes. In our redesign, uh, we placed product images and ingredients of the specific menu item along the edges of the page to create a more visually engaging presentation of Wendy's menu. Additionally, we included a nav bar specifically for our menu page to separate each menu category so that users can quickly and conveniently find their desired menu item. Moving on to the contact page, um, from our preliminary survey, 76% of users stated that um, they usually go on smoothie websites to check its opening hours and 69% said that they wanted to locate the physical store. So in order to allow the users to easily discover this information, we housed it in a separate contact page, which is also where a lot of users expect to find the information. And additionally, we incorporated a Google Maps API for users to conveniently get the directions. And since Blendies also wanted to highlight their catering services, we included information about this on our contact page and created a form where users can answer detailed questions about their catering needs. Lastly is our, our story page. So as much as they're trying to sell their products, Blendies also communicated their wish to share to the world their story as a small black owned business. Thus, we added an our story page to their website to showcase Blendies humble start and mission. On this page, we give a brief introduction to Blendies origins, their core values and their local garden. Moving on to visual design. Um, overall, Blendies wanted to establish like a down to earth, simple website and gave us keywords such as healthy, clean and inviting to describe their company tone. Since Blendies wanted to emphasize like the vibrant natural colors of fruit, our core colors consist of the bright oranges, yellows, greens and darker purples, which represent um, common fruits. And then um, because they were so bright, we, rec we recognized that it could cause potential accessibility issues. So um, to combat this, we incorporated lighter shades of our core colors that can also communicate an inviting tone. And in our final rounds of user testing, um, five out of five users stated that the redesigned website felt simply simple, friendly, or intu intuitive, which matched our um, preferred or desired visual direction. And with that, we redesigned Blendy's website on Squarespace with a fresh new look that allows users to easily browse through their menu contact them for partnerships and amplify their business's culture. So hi all, today I wanted to sum up our presentation and I wanted to share a little bit about the story and background behind our marketing strategy and our content strategy. So throughout our 10 week partnership, we always kept in mind our original problem of lacking an online presence and customer engagement. And with that, we tried to put ourselves in the shoes of a potential customer and asked ourselves the question of, when would a customer end up at Blendies? Um, so this mentality of putting ourselves in the shoes of our customers really allowed us to set three specific and actionable goals uh, that would allow us to answer that very question of when a customer would, end, would find themselves at Blendies. 
So through our research, we realized that a customer ends up at Blendies when number one, they are looking for healthy food, when they are when they find the website and when they can place an order, either online, over the phone, or in person via directions. So these reasons inform our primary goals, uh, which we defined as uh, the what to what do we need to do for our customer to then eat at Blendies, and these included what well, you can see here as uh, driving web traffic, increasing the conversion rate, and expanding customer engagement. So with these, we know the when and the what, and moving on to the how, we ask ourselves, how would we go about accomplishing our goals? So we set, which we established in these four key ways, uh, multi-targeted, multi-platform advertising campaigns, an online ordering implementation, community-based marketing ideation, and a web page revamp. So through our data and research, we've believe that each of these will allow us to answer the when, what and how questions. So firstly, we sought to increase web traffic by drawing clicks to our new website via our advertising campaigns. These ad campaigns were regional. They were keyword optimized campaigns across Google, Yelp, Instagram, and Facebook. And all of these different campaigns made use of available ad credit. So reducing the cost for our stakeholders while at the same time forming a cohesive and united message which we intend will ultimately increase Blendy's SEO rank to increase and thus they allow for more visitors to the website. Next, we implemented various tools uh, in our web revamp that allow for an increase in order flexibility, customer engagement, and business efficiency. So amongst these quality changes was also the implementation of an online ordering system, which required a substantial point of sale overhaul, but what we believe will contribute towards uh, accomplishing our goal of increasing conversion rates, allowing it, allowing the customer to have an easier time at going on the website and placing an order. So finally, we wanted to think about the post power of future for Blendies. And so keeping in, keeping in mind their roots, we created a long-term community-based marketing ideation strategy with key points of contacts, events, and activities that Blendies can get involved with in the future for on the ground marketing. So this is the how behind our goals. And then moving on, this is the why. The why is pretty straightforward. Pardon that, sorry. So the why is pretty straightforward. Um, looking at our business metrics, we clearly saw a need for a, a mobile focused marketing strategy with the large majority of our users being on mobile devices and a large majority of our users looking up for items such as food near me, restaurants near me, healthy food near me. So these we clearly saw a need for this. And so this laid the foundation for the implementation of a mobile friendly website, an adverti mobile friendly advertising focus and an online ordering service. And behind all this, we sought to answer the when, what and how behind our goals and actions. But behind it all was Blendies and specifically Monique's core message. We put health at the forefront. So our goal is to help Blendies sp spread their message. And so when we let this be the primary focus for everything we did. So, and so as we draw to a close, we encourage you all to take a look at our case study. Our team worked together and worked really hard um, over these past 10 weeks. And so I'm sure the case study will show for it. I'm sure you can draw some, some things from that. Um, and finally, we wanted to just say a couple of thank yous. Firstly, thank you to our mentors, uh, Marcy, Levy, and Taria. You guys were incredibly valuable in your input, your advice, and your support. Uh, thank you to our stakeholders, Monique and Andriana. You guys were unendingly, you guys were so optimistic all the time, which really helped us uh, feel proud of our work. You guys' input was always so valuable and your advice and your support and smiles especially were invaluable. And thank you to the Power Up team again for uh, putting on this really transformative experience for all of us. Um, it was really something that I, I, I will look fondly back upon. I'm sure the rest of my team will as well. Um, and kind of personally, I really want to thank kind of each and every member of our own team. I know Jody, uh, I've never met someone so on top of everything, like every logistic, every deadline, everything. Like you were just so on top of it. This morning at 2 a.m., she was sending us messages about like, this is what needs to be updated uh, and stuff like that. So that was really awesome to see. And Tracy, uh, the, just like the perseverance and persistence in your work was really like awe-inspiring. I know you had a really difficult task of like nailing down uh, what the visual design should be, but you kept at it and you really, really killed it with this. Uh, Nicolette, I thought you were so incredibly like knowledgeable and like well-versed in like everything. And you were like everywhere. You were in marketing and UX and this and that. And like, you were really helping everybody uh, kind of fulfill their duties. And Ro, you're quiet a lot of the times, 
but you did so much behind the scenes that it was really like inspiring you, like the website without you probably would not look anywhere near as as good as it does right now um and i wanted to make sure you knew that that was appreciated so thank you all and uh thanks for the time to present thank you adrian <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. You're amazing too. That was great, fun news. That was a thank great you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That thank was you a all. great tear tear jerker for real. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Okay, we're gonna go in for a very quick feedback session after that. So anyone who has any thoughts or comments, you can drop in the chat or unmute anytime. Um, I just wanted to say um, great storytelling and the process is really clear. So I really like the whole presentation. Good job. And this is Marcy. That was a great job, you guys. Um, you handed off really well and really appreciate how you started off really strong. Yeah, well done, team. Definitely echo what the other mentor said. It was truly a pleasure to watch. So awesome job. Okay, if there are no more comments, we can move on to Ferlicious. So for Ferlicious, we have Princess, who is the marketing strategist, Hannah, who is the visual designer and marketing strategist, Matthew, who's the visual designer and content strategist, and Autumn, who is the marketing and content strategist. For our mentors, we have Alex, who is a visual experience designer at ServiceNow, and Sabrina, a digital strategy analyst at Adobe. Okay. So hi everyone, we're Team for Alicious and for Alicious Pet Services is a black owned pet care service that caters to all different types of pets from dogs and cats to alpacas and reptiles. Uh, Matthew, yeah. I think you're on mute. Yeah, you're muted. Right. Just realized. Thank you. So the key problem we identified was we wanted to enhance the accessibility and awareness of Felicia's service, uh, Felicia's services to an older demographic through social media and out-of-home advertising platforms to help increase customer engagement and to grow their audience for Zoom. And our solution to this problem was to initiate a newly rebranded identity. We wanted to create an aesthetic social media revamp for their Instagram and effectively um, an effective social media at a home marketing plan, which will help older pet owners around 40 to 65 engage with ferocious content and services. So to start off the design problem, we first initiate, uh, identified a few main problems, being that there was a lack of absence or the strong brand identity, both on social media and at a home. And as you can see here, these were their approaches original main color palette being a bright pink and teal, which led to accessibility issues. And as we look in the middle script, um, there was issues with the interaction of the colors on top of each other. And also, as we see on the logo on the right and the middle one, the different script faces are different or the script faces are different and that so it wasn't cohesive. And as we can see on the Instagram, when you put the profile picture on the on the profile picture, it was a little illegible, it was hard to read, it wasn't recognizable. The story icons were inconsistent, some were inconsistent, some were formatted in some way. And the Instagram feed was not cohesive, didn't reflect their their true and retro 80s um, or that they wanted to pertain to. And so we have, for research, we uh, conducted a visual analysis of our visual competitive analysis with other pet sitting and dog animal services in the San Diego area. 
And we definitely, one thing we noticed is that Ferocious was definitely a bolder palette than the other uh, companies. They're more, we did not stand it out. They wanted more clean and professional, but Ferocious really just shine through their personality and also with their typography. So it's something we wanted to uphold as well. And to set the stage for our memorable and inviting brand experience, our team went on a mission to redefine the Ferocious brand identity. So let's start by building a brand. We began our ideation process by brainstorming multiple mood boards that have a body for delicious, bold, playful, and relational brand personality. On the top left, we went for a very, we highlighted for delicious very vibrancy, the potential uh, for them to be very vibrant. And we also went for a muted um, mood board. And on the bottom left, it's more authoritative, more bold, uh, really pertaining to the decades and we wanted and the solution we came to for this before was that the first and the third encompasses uh, aspects of what should we want to hold on to next is typography in order to make and uh, to fix the readability issues with ferlicious we wanted to really uh do a deep dive into what we can do with the typography of ferlicious and while researching several different typefaces we came to a few final conclusions and we, for these three, they were the most readable and still went for a religious cursive-esque or a script face. Okay. Right, next slide, please. And also, in the uh, the script face was the main primary heading font, uh, typeface. We wanted to encompass a nice sans serif uh, for W's for more body text to help. So um, the primary face can stand out a little bit more than the rest of the text. And we went with Roboto uh, Regular because it pairs really nicely with the font we decided being Cream Puff. And the different variations of play could uh, help emphasize some things we want in advertisements in the future and other times that we didn't. And, oh, sorry, you can and next we go on to the logo process. So we wanted to give a nice logo for Felicious. And the first instance is that we wanted Felicious to really hold on to a standard that they include all pets, not just dogs and, and dogs and cats. And with this, uh, our first logo iteration, the heart emphasized the, trust, the care and trust customers who love Felicious. And we wanted to put as many animals, not as many animals, but the animals that Felicious do tend to work with as well. And come to our animals. But we realized that with that logo, it wasn't too distinct. It was a little bit more complicated and busy. So we went through some other iterations. Um, going with uh, on the left, we have a poodle with an educational cap. Since Ferocious does like to um, educate their customers about the different uh, aspects of being a pet owner. And on the right, a dog house would face as a dog with a heart to hold on to that care and warmth and at the homeowners. And right here, just pointing out the different elements of this book before. And we realized that these logos were a little bit too dog centric and we wanted to still hold on to the fact that Fortune encompasses on animals of all sorts, pets of all sorts. So we went back into the mood board and decided that holding on to the retro 80s cleaner look was was definitely the way to go for Felicious. For the logo on the right, we used rounded squares and pertain to the retro 80s look and went for a dog tag. And the leash at the end of the S helped, or the S translated into a leash, hint that the dog training services. And for the banner on the left, uh, it's an oval with, with triangles in the background. Again, going back to the retro 80s. And it goes, it gets really strong geometric pattern. And we could have built a strong uh, brand identity off of this. And going with this logo further, and for designing in black and white, we wanted to use the main colors of Felicia's that we use, but and make them interact a little bit nicer so with the two harsh eyes. And this is a logo we, we can't remove. And for, as for uh, graphic elements. So our first iter um, iterations highlight for Licious's original branding colors, a bright pink and teal shown through a vibrant gradient background. 
Keeping in mind the bold, preppy, and funky feel of the retro's 80s, we incorporated blobs, sparkles, and curved tags. Since later on we added darker and lighter muted hues of these three colors, um, we experimented how, gradients to, um, how we can explore gradients to still incorporate vibrancy into the graphics without interrupting its readability and accessibility. We finally took specific colors from the palettes and dedicated it to a specific type of content for easy organization and identification from simply looking at Instagram's um, profile feed. For our final mockups, we created three different styles of graphics for our stakeholders to rotate between, which all reflect a really more refined, clean, and professional style that caters to the taste of their audience of older pet owners, while staying fun, bold, lively, and bright, fulfilling the desires and achieving the needs of our stakeholders while ensuring easy read um, readability and accessibility. And here are all the examples of our final prototypes. And one last element, a uh, visual element we wanted to improve was the story icons. As you can see, some of the icons are formatted to look like they're together. Other formats is well, the finishes, we wanted to complete that for full issues. And we see at the next slide, these were the highlight icons we constructed uh, to really pertain to the different stories that would be found in there. For example, we have the podcast, a typical podcast microphone for not at their foolish uh, podcast. We also included two new uh, story icons being behind the scenes and clients to give foolish more uh, opportunities to speak on or more opportunities to uh, for the stories. And next, as we go into out of home advertisement, we this is our first layout we went for uh, looking for dog trainers and dogs is not anymore, but we realized that the looking for dog trainer aspect would get to miss when someone's driving a route on the road looking at the billboard and we wanted to be some, uh, go for something a little bit more memorable. So we cut out the uh, the trainer and the dog so that there was no background behind it and it'll be all on the same um, billboard background and we work with some slogans to be let's, let's work through those rough days together and let's train through those rough days together and including a bar at the bottom of the billboard to for their logo, website, and for the bench ads uh, phone number. And we went with let's train through those rough days together simply because using train um, nods at the, the at the dumbbell the trainer is working um, holding and through their dog training services. And this, as you can see, this is how the billboards are bench and how the Instagram would feed with the new, but the newly implemented deliverables and visual elements, um, as long with some um, cups, tote bags. And for, as a reflection, if we had more time, we would have expanded these visual elements into more designs for more out of home opportunities and for more social services, such as a website and other social media platforms. So for the marketing process, um, the main problem was that there was an absence of a strong social media presence and expansive marketing outreach. And we actually found this problem through um, by conducting SWOT analysis on Furlishes. While they had lo a loyal clientele basis, we noticed that they had a weak online presence and sense of brand. From there, we researched other competitors in the San Diego region. Most of their competitors had an advantage in the social media and web review space. However, Furlicious did stand out to them because they offers, offer services to all pets, were bond-based, had remote training, and value community involvement. And after learning more about her competitors and user demographics, we created a user persona named Daniel. He's 53 years He's a 53-year-old CEO who owns two dogs, and his main point, point his main pain point is that he isn't aware of Furlicious updates because of their inconsistent posts on Instagram. And after conducting our market research, we were able to create an Instagram ad campaign. And our ad campaign strategy follows a marketing funnel that focuses on the customer journey throughout um, towards making a purchase. So let's take a look how Daniel could have discovered Furlicious. With our first campaign, Daniel had um, just become a new pet owner with update with the adoption of his two dogs, unsure of how to train them. He sees a bond-based training versus peer positive posts that educates him on the type of training that he should do. This exposes him to their company values and brings awareness to Furlicious and how they train their pets. He checks out their page and finds out there um, a pet service located close to him with a couple of shared mutuals. Then the following month, he comes across another ad campaign that shows um, his photos about Furlicious pet services, which establishes brand credit credibility and encourages Daniel to keep a close eye on their content and services. 
The next month, Dan um, Daniel sees another ad with their services directly linked to the booking website with more info. Seeing the pet training service and further information on it, he clicks through and makes an appointment. After becoming familiar with the company and its services, this, this ad encourages Daniel to actually try out their services. And in addition, we set the following as the starting budget for these ads and are loosely adopting a 60%, 30%, and 10% role that fits with the funnel marketing approach in building an established audience from the ground up. And here are some further um, prototypes of our final prototypes for the ad campaign graphics. And we have more for the content posting um, about how Daniel can learn more about Furlicious and learn more about the pets and also how can how can how he can be more educated about um, animals and pet take, um, and pet caring. And besides ad campaign, we also wanted to focus on hashtag and um, caption strategy. So to increase engagement, we wanted to implement a new hashtag strategy. For Lucius's current hashtag strategy doesn't really maximize their potential reach um, because as of right now, they're using around 15 to 20 hashtags per post and the majority of them are really generic and saturated. So to improve their reach, we actually propose using the waterfall, waterfall strategy instead. And after talking with Janine and learning more about Furlicious and their company values, we wanted the brand's voice to reflect their authentic, the authenticity of Furlicious. And um, we decided that Furlicious is confident, witty, and personal, and we made sure to reflect that in their captions. So utilizing their new brand voice, we also developed the caption strategy. As you can see in their older captions, they don't really include a call to action. Um, the brand voice is there, but it's not as strong. Whereas with our newer caption strategy, we make sure to um, really showcase their brand's personality while also relating it back to the business through calls of actions and making it more um, readable and less wordy. And as you can see, when we're doing our research into out of home ads and billboards, we were just in the, essentially analyzing different businesses with their price or geographic reach since we are located in San Diego, LA, and Orange County. And the, just essentially find the best business for us, eventually being Blit Billboard and ben, Big Bench Ads. And one of our final deliverables, we sent over to Forlicious was a social media engagement guide, uh, listing all different aspects of Instagram, different so aspects of social media, getting rid of the best strategies, and, um, and for posting your stories, different content ideas, and everything in, in that sort. And as for a reflection, if we had more time, we would, we would love to go into a deeper dive into web marketing, like improving uh, her Yelp profile and creating a Google re reviews profile and looking into other social media platforms such as TikTok. And lastly, we just wanna do a big thank you to the to our mentors, Alex and Sabrina for everything that they've done for us, all the work, insights, resources, um, seeing to see their process behind everything and really could not have gotten learned as much as we could without our mentors. And we would like to say a thank you to Furlicious Pet Services for allowing us to work, with, to work with them, trusting us to work with them, and really um, being a great factor into this learning experience. And a big thank you for Power for organizing and putting everything together for this, um, for this internship. Everything was great and we appreciate it. Thank you. All right, very cool. Um, good job, Furlicious. Everything was so well thought out. Um, and you guys did amazing on your research and your iterations. Um, we're going to open up the floor for any feedback from your mentors or the business or any other mentors or anyone else in the audience who wants to say something. Hey, y'all. I wanted to say really great job with this uh, overall storytelling. I really loved how you were able to transition between the brand identity aspects and going into the social media and the out-of-home uh, advertising. I think y'all did a really great job putting that slide deck together and putting this presentation together. So great job over the past 10 weeks. And it's been great, really great working with you. Thank you. We could not have done it without you. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank you for everything. I think we have a lot of comments on the side that have really mentioned that they love seeing the iteration process. But for me, um, one of the big things from the from the brand identity and the logo design was that you you put in a lot of research and competitive research into uh, deciding whether or not um, 
you know, the, the current retro AD design fit was right. And even though we saw a lot of research that may have indicated there were other designs that, that businesses pursued, um, it, that research didn't necessarily compel you or, or, or force you into following that path. I think that was a good gut instinct um, and choice uh, to, to, to stick with what set this business apart, which is that 80s, 80s feel. All right, if there aren't any other questions, we can move on to Cut and Dry Barbershop. So for our power uppers, we have Julie as a UX designer, Fernando as a UX researcher, Twee as a visual designer, Liliana as a marketing and content strategist, Kim as a web builder, and for mentors, we have Lucy, who's associate visual designer at ServiceNow, Paula, who's an interaction designer at Google, and Steffi, who's the head of marketing at RUTC. And the cut and dry barber shop team can go ahead and take it away. Yeah, hi everyone. We are the cut and dry barber shop team, and we're super excited to show what we have done today. So, yeah, who is cut and dry barber shop? Um, Cut and Dry is an Asian American veteran owned and operated barbershop in Mira Mesa, San Diego. And they began in 2016 and saw their shop as a vision of community for their customers from all walks of life. And they specialize in men's haircuts. They do many community service and charity work throughout the year in SD. And they really focus on getting to know their customers. And for Cut and Dry, it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, there is a place for you at this barbershop. And um, from our initial meetings with Cut and Dry, the, some issues they expressed where that they feel like there's a general disconnect with their audience online and they feel like they don't convey their story well through their online presence. And um, initially going through their Instagram from our end, some problems we saw is that there's no strong branding or visual identity. Um, there were many random images such as posting pictures of paper cups or construction work. And there was inconsistency in posting schedules, so it looked, they looked a little inactive. And overall, it was a bit plain and didn't create a lasting impression. And moving on to their website, um, our initial thoughts was that it also it lacked the intuitive hierarchy of information and also lacked that personal touch since they didn't have any details about the business or the barbers themselves besides contact information. And similarly to the Instagram, there was no strong, solid branding. With this information in mind, we wondered how other people felt about Cut and Dry's online presence. So we sought to invalidate and validate our critiques and assumptions through user research. So we initially sent out a Google survey and throughout 10 weeks, we conducted weekly iterated user testing on 12 unique participants. While gathering our insights, we found that many users expressed similar sentiments when critiquing Cut and Dry's platforms. One user said, I wish I could know the story behind the barber shop and what makes it different. Another user said, without clear access to their community involvement and story, they don't come off as authentic to me. So we realized that an unclear backstory made it difficult for users to see them as unique and likely concluded them to be impersonal. From a glance, I can't immediately tell what kinds of cuts they do or specialize in. This shows us that there wasn't enough visual content to spark interest in the business or help users decide on a haircut or barber. It was difficult for me to find the hours and location. I feel like that should be priority. And another user said, searching for information on their site makes it difficult for me to want to book with them. This showed us that inconsistent information architecture, organization, and flow made it difficult for users to navigate the site. So with these insights, we were able to narrow down our scope to two distinct problems. The first one being, how might we help establish a deeper and more personalized connection between online visitors and the business in order to increase engagement and leave a good impression? To combat this, we revamped Cut and Dry's online presence by establishing and implementing a visual system that will guide and support cohesive and welcoming branding on their Instagram and website. 
Our second problem was how might we make information discovery more efficient and intuitive in order to increase the likelihood of finding the information they need and booking an appointment. To address this, we redesigned their website and social media with focuses in crafting and communicating their origin story and brand personality and optimizing navigation flow and how information is organized. So you know what they say, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Well, in this case, keep your competitors closer. We looked at different types of barbershops, such as corporate, local, and popular barbershops, and we made note of common features on the website and analyzed how effective they were. Some patterns we discovered amongst our competitors with strong and good engagement were that their content revolved around one, strong and consistent branding, second, storytelling, and third, they had distinct areas for significant information such as hours, location, and contact information. We address this by one, defining a visual system. We began storytelling through creating barber bios and creating an about us page. And third, we incorporated story highlights onto their social media and adjusted their website user flow so information could be more discoverable. So when defining their visual system, I was really inspired by the word sleekness, uh, which is a really fresh feeling that you get after a fresh cut. So I wanted to convey the same feeling that you get after a haircut when looking at their website. So for the visual goals and vision, um, I really wanted to achieve, next slide please. Can you go to the previous slide, please? Yes, okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to achieve the easygoing feeling that they're also just your friendly neighborhood barbers who can easily elevate their next cut. And I really wanted to capture that culture and that community within the graphics. Um, so really mixed it with a lot of minimalistic looks and um, urban aesthetics um, to see how really capture the customers and their feelings to see what they might be experiencing before even getting there. Um, some of the struggles that I really faced was that I had to work around their original visual assets because um, with the original sets, it was one thing to just overpower it, but I really needed to focus on elevating their original assets and making sure that it was as accessible as it can be. Yeah, so using our initial branding guidelines, we started focusing on the issues surrounding strong branding and visuals on our social media. And our solution for this was to introduce um, the use of infographics, which allows your feed to look more cohesive and have that um, retain that strong visual identity that we're looking for. And it allows for more variety of posts than just plain images, such as the tips and also the barber spotlights. And we crafted some examples tailored for cut and dry using their existing photos. And now you can see like in the bottom right that the random images that we mentioned before, such as paper cups, now have a bit more meaning and context and also visual appeal in a graphic. And after editing the infographics um, in our final iteration with the official branding guidelines, we created a mock feed to see how everything will look together. And now we can visibly see their signature teal color with the splashes of pink and all this ties together and leaves a more memorable impression than before. And with the solidified visual system, and now that we have a general theme of their website and social media down, we want to introduce this new branding to their Instagram. Um, and we did this, we want to do this by um, posting a row of pictures to subtly hint at the new website that will be published soon while separating the feed from the old pictures to the new pictures that they will implement using our um, guides and other documents. And another issue that we want to address was the storytelling aspect. And to do this, um, well, we first we noticed the lack of personal feel or knowing like any more background information about the barbershop easily on social media. And an easy way to introduce this was to show off the people that work there. So we created um, barber spotlights. And this is just to meet the barbers, get to know who they are through their Instagram with also incorporating the use of infographics. And as we mentioned, um, we wanted a place for um, information. 
So um, what we did was create Instagram story highlights and kind of expressed before that customers would ask them like the same questions, such as what are your business hours, even though it's posted in the captions. So maybe that wasn't the best place to put that kind of information. So that's why we came up with using story highlights. And also we decided to incorporate a services highlight so that users won't have to take that extra step into going to their website and they might stay on the Instagram page longer if this is this information is easily accessible at the top of Instagram. And as you can see, we already started, we already uploaded this onto their Instagram. Um, yeah. Okay, so now it's time for the demo. Extending that storytelling marketing strategy into our final design, here is our homepage. Our homepage kicks off storytelling by having Cut and Dry's personally produced video playing in the background. And as the user scrolls down, they're able to get an immediate gist of the business personality by reading a quote that summarized their motto pulled directly from our co-owner uh, co Jefferson and viewing images that foster a welcoming atmosphere. Here's the about us page. Dive deeper into the humble beginnings of Cut and Dry by reading their story on the about us page, which they previously did not have on their site. Beyond their origin story, this page features their community involvement and pokes into their personalities by allowing the user to play a sample of their Spotify song. On the Barber page, users are able to get to know these individuals on a more personal level before they even step into the store. When choosing a barber, research shows that users often like seeing the barber's previous work. But instead of adding a jumble of gallery pictures on site, we link the barber bios to the individual Instagrams, which already serve as an existing portfolio for their work. Their previous service page had zero images and the sentence description of each service made it difficult for users to tell the difference between them. On the new service page, users can see the icons to efficiently view what service includes, what each service includes or excludes. And images serve as a visual aid to help users make that decision on what kind of service that they want. So here's the contact page. On their original site, there wasn't a distinct area where users could locate contact information. They had to scroll endlessly and throughout the site to find it. Here, we put ease into the search by making the contact page in a permanent addition to the nav bar and making sure that their activity doesn't stop here by linking Cut and Dry's social media platforms so that users can proceed forward to that. So, Let's backtrack 10 weeks ago. When asking users, how would you describe cut and dry? Many of, many of them couldn't pinpoint a specific vibe saying, I can't really describe their vibe. 10 weeks forward, asking that same question to new and existing participants, users would say, I feel like I know them even before, even before stepping foot in the door. Ensuring a unified visual system and emphasizing storytelling helps users perceive cut and dry in the way that they want to be perceived, which is trustworthy, friendly, and down to earth. With information now in distinct and clear areas of the site, it will now help users find the information they need quickly, get a more personal experience, and encourage more users to book with cut and dry. Yeah, thank you all so much for um, being here and listening to what we had to say. And we want to take this time to thank our mentors, Paula, Steffi, and Lucy for their time and effort in helping us the past 10 weeks to succeed and put this project together. And we hope not only was it helpful to us, but that this was a great experience for you as well. And thank you, Cut and Dry, for giving us this opportunity to learn and trusting us to put, have a part in your business. And lastly, thank you, Power Up Team, for putting this program together and working hard to coordinate each week for us so that we can have a successful summer. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you. Yeah, wow, I think you guys did a really amazing job really like redefining their branding and design to really convey their branding's ethos to the audience. So overall, like really great job. Um, yeah, and now if anyone from the audience would like to provide any feedback to their amazing project, that'd be great. Hello. <laughs> I just, um, this is Jefferson Gorn here, one of the barbers, also owner of Cut and Dry Barbershop. Just want to thank the team again for choosing us out of all the other businesses. 
you did a really good job, really good job. And we appreciate it. And it has impacted our business in a very positive way. Hi, um, I also just want to say I'm so proud of you guys. Um, it was such a cool experience watching you guys redesign this from start and finish. It looks so cohesive and so polished. Um, I did have one question was, was there a feature or design that you guys wanted to work on that you didn't get the chance or time to do? Again, I'm so proud of you guys. Um, to answer your question, oh, Julie, do you have something to say? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I think one thing we wanted to implement was trying to um, connect Google Analytics to the website, but we haven't been able to get to that step because the website was um, initially like already um, kind of a struggle to put together. So if we have more time, that's something we definitely want to explore. I just want to add on, like, I'm also really proud of you guys for all the work you guys put in. I know um, how the slides came together ended up being really thoughtful, just walking us start to finish and, you know, even showing us a little snippet of each thing that you worked on. But also, I just want to comment, like, as a team, I loved how you guys worked together throughout the whole process. Like, even, I don't, know how, I don't even know how well you guys knew each other before, but I feel like how you guys handed each part off to one another was just like a wonderful demonstration of great teamwork. Like from user testing to, uh, you know, ideation creation, I feel like you guys all made each other feel not only really comfortable in your own domain, but you guys always just kind of reinforce, you know, genuine feedback and made each other feel appreciated. So great job team. Thank you so much, Steffi. Okay, I think we're gonna be moving on to the next team, but great job, cut and dry. That was super great. A plus website, that was so good. Okay. So next we're gonna be moving on to Kinney Coffee. So here are our power uppers. We have Stella as the UX designer and visual designer. Rainy is the UX researcher. And then we have Edward as a web builder. Deepika is UX designer and web builder. And China is the marketing and content strategist for this team. And for the mentors, we have Lily as a product designer. She's working at Facebook. We have Jenny, who's a senior product designer at Intuit, and Brian is a product marketing manager at Google. So take it away, Kenny Coffee. Awesome. Thank you so much, Juno, for that excellent handoff. Um, so hi guys, we're the Kininis. Uh, we worked for Kini Coffee to build them their first web presence outside of social media. So Kini Coffee is a female-owned coffee shop located in Del Mar and Encinitas. Uh, their business is entirely female-operated, building an empowering space for women to work unconventional jobs. And they enjoy showing off creative sweet drinks that are named after its employees and close customers. Kini Coffee's business owner, Jewel, started her business around December uh, of last year uh, alongside her pregnancy. Um, so she's been an extremely busy woman working with lots of responsibilities, and this led her to reach out to Power Up to receive help in building a website. Our goal was to figure out how we can make Jewel an online platform that conveyed all the necessary information to her potential customers while not being so overwhelming for her to manage. So this solution was pushed out in three parts. The first is a low maintenance website hosted on Squarespace. This showcases Kini Coffee's two locations, their views and their standout drinks. And it also has a call to action to view their menu. Next, we created a Square Online store that serves as the main hub for customers to access the menu because this integrates with Jill's pre-existing Square point of sale service. This site also serves as an online ordering platform. And then lastly, we refined Google's, uh, their Google My Business account, where we cleaned up Kini Coffee's Google Map presence by verifying each of her locations and populated her account with Google, a Google Ads campaign aligning with our proposed content and brand strategy. Uh, to get to know where we got these solutions for Jules' business, we need to take a look into how we got started on this project. Hi, um, so 
Kini Coffee has an undeniably strong social media presence with approximately 22,000 followers on TikTok, which makes their social media stand out amongst its competitors as they have such high numbers for them being such a young business. Their coffee also features unique flavor combinations that makes the store stand out in comparison to its competitors. However, Kini Coffee did not have a website and there wasn't much emphasis on its Google Maps and Yelp presence. For example, their second location wasn't listed on Google Maps and could only be found through social media posts and profile descriptions. There are also inconsistencies between different social media platforms and their store hours. So at this point, we tried to move into ideation, but we decided that there are a few gaps in our knowledge. So we had a few points of struggle, some being that we were unable to define a clear problem and get a grasp of what customers or users wanted. And we were also distracted by a lot of extraneous things such as their TikTok content, um, creating shirts or mugs and merch. But we needed to address these issues before delivering a viable product. Um, so with the help of our mentors, we were able to slow down and refocus our initial research. So during our first meeting with our client, we learned she wanted to convey a Kini Coffee brand as a fun beachy creative coffee shop for people aged around 16 to 20 years old. So keeping this in mind, we split our discovery research into three phases, user surveys, customer interviews, and market research. So from our user research, we realized that our biggest takeaway is that Kini Coffee's key qualities are from its online consumer base. Um, here are just a few key findings we got from our research. A notable point, for example, would just be that users really like the scenery and ambiance of the store, but no one really recognized that when viewing Kini Coffee on social media. Um, even though Kini Coffee's Del Mar location and beachside views are a key attraction to the shop, um, interview participants who only looked at the social media content failed to recognize that this was a standout feature of the store. So this was really important to keep in mind when developing our wireframes. So overall, we found that Kini Coffee had many strong aspects about their business that they weren't showing off to its fullest potential, affecting the middle to bottom of the funnel in its customer acquisition process. In an effort to address both our customer and client needs, we created these two problem statements that encompassed all our goals for the project. We then transitioned into the ideation and wireframing phase to begin creating our website. These initial sitemaps were very important in helping us define which features were essential to implement on Kini Coffee's final website. When we initially made these, we still imagined a long list of features, but cut down on them later in the process. These two versions really guided us in helping um, create our website wireframes as well. Uh, after we created two different wireframes based on our initial sitemaps, we tested our wireframes on four users in Kini Coffee's target 16 to 20 demographic. The menu and locations pages were where most users faced confusion or expressed dislike. They had difficulty navigating the information on the menu, particularly the one with images, and could not identify important location information such as store hours and addresses. After accounting for this feedback, we greatly cut down and improved the layout of the features that we showcased. Um, the four R's addressed how we iterated upon our feedback. We took our feedback, both from users and mentors, to improve on our low fidelity iterations and sitemap to make sure we created strong layouts that we could rely on when constructing our high fidelity website. Reducing the number of pages on our website served as a way to minimize how much a user has to click to find information they wish to view. Through this new format, where there's only a homepage and about page living on the website, we were still able to show the same information but it was more concise and less redundant. We replaced the menu with a hyperlink to the Square Online ordering service because it would ensure that our client Jewel only has to maintain a central menu, which would be best to accommodate her busy schedule. Additionally, during user testing, people show that they expect to see category tabs and customization options that really match the format of our Square Online store. In the end, it made the most sense to proceed with this change to increase usability for both our client and her customers. We removed the locations page as well and moved location information to the home page so that this information is more discoverable for a user on a mobile device. It also reduces how much all users have to click and reload pages to find desired information. We restructure the content on the pages of the entire site to prioritize essential features and minimize less important content. For example, on the home page, we highlight standout drinks and store details. On the about page, we highlight their key attributes. The intention of this was to keep the website focused and clean while also reducing how often the client has to adjust the content herself on the website. 
So yeah, with our wireframe solidifying the usability of our website, we tied all our elements together by refining the visual branding, tone, website components, and marketing strategy for Kini Coffee. Because Kini Coffee's branding was inconsistent amongst all its platforms, we took an audit of all the fonts that Kini Coffee featured on their graphics. From there, we rigorously cut down the amount of fonts they used to two header fonts and a body font. Uh, the combination of a legible sans serif and a script font maintains the loose, beachy personality of the existing brand, whilst making sure that the copy is le legible and concise. Combining this type treatment with Kini Coffee's original pink, black, and white aesthetic really accentuates the girly, friendly, and empowering nature of Kini Coffee. The pink also provides contrast to the blue-toned beachy photos that are taken of Kini Coffee's um, drinks and locations to balance the colors of the overall style. Awesome, thanks, Stella. Um, and our stakeholder described the shop as fun, girly, and cute, while interviewees from our market research described the brand to be a young, unique Miami Beach-looking small business with colorful drinks. Combining all this information, we decided that the tone of the website is conversational, as if a friendly barista is talking to you through a screen. We wanted to be approachable, keeping the spirit of fun, which is why some sections start with, hey, love, and the descriptions are playful. So as Stella mentioned before, two parts of our solution were websites. So here's a few key parts of their main one. So one important thing that we implemented because of our research were our drink featurettes. Um, we aim to showcase some of Kini Coffee's unique specials that everyone seems to love. And we have it right at the top of our page to draw people in. We also included location information a little down the page. Um, Kini's Kini Coffee's location and atmosphere, and especially the Del Mar one, is a definite strong point of the storefronts. Um, we also wanted an easy, convenient place to show both store hours and the beautiful scenery. Um, additionally, at the bottom of our page was an Instagram gallery and a footer with social media links, which aimed to keep the site fresh with new organic content each week. Next, we have our About Us page, which shows us three main characteristics and strengths of Kini Coffee, such as the friendly baristas of the small women-owned business, um, the atmosphere around the shops, and of course, the delicious coffee. Um, we also overhauled their square point of sale system. Um, previously, it had a lot of duplicate items and it really wasn't organized, which wouldn't translate well to selling online as users would see all the duplicates and they wouldn't understand like um, how to order drinks. So we revamped it with new categories, um, modifiers for drinks, new options, and no duplicates. And all of this organization came together in their Square Online site, which allows anyone to order Kini Coffee drinks anywhere with just a few clicks. Thanks, Edward. All right, on to the marketing package. Next slide, please. Aside from the content created for the website, we looked at Kini Coffee's Instagram and TikTok and noticed that there was some inconsistency, inconsistency in the bio. Normally, it wouldn't be that big a deal, but we saw this as an opportunity to reframe the brand image. Um, it could use some harmony. So, you know, was it like a female run business or does it have unique coffee or is it both? This led to a tagline across the website, unique coffee made by empowered women. Paying a lot of attention to the social media when Kini Coffee was already strong in that type of marketing had us diverting our focus to Google My Business. We had plenty of fresh ideas proposing to use Planoli to enhance social media content planning with her stakeholder, but she didn't really have a problem doing that. And we also proposed extra deliverable, de deliverables like podcasts, email marketing, et cetera, when we should have been listening to the user test and market results, which is why we're keen to enhance the Google Maps and Yelp, but Google Maps specifically. Here are examples of what the Google ads would look like. It's key components aligned with that of the websites, highlighting the beachy, highlighting the beachy atmosphere, the friendly baristas, and of course, the delicious and uniquely made coffee. This also includes addresses from both locations, social media, and once the website's published, we will include that too. Google ads search terms are what we call paid ads. These terms listed are the most commonly searched relevant to the shop. 
important. And here are the images we chose for our Google ads. We wanted to keep that theme consistent in tone we had built for the website and keep that consistent with the brand. So um, you'll see a lot of the same-ish images. And as we mentioned before, we had a lot of ideas, but we had to learn how to narrow it down to the initial deliverables. However, we propose an in the future marketing plan for our stakeholder, which is an Instagrammable wall for her to boost her marketing later on. Um, and we propose this specifically because it makes sense for her target demographic, her TikTok and Instagram following base. And finally, one of the biggest challenges we faced was having to work within such time constraints, but we worked towards resolving the issue this issue by creating concise yet effective solutions that address the problems we found. Some of our next steps are to hand off marketing and website guidelines to our client so that she can continue to update it and operate it on her own. And we just wanna say thank you to our mentors for always giving us honest feedback that really shaped what this project is. And we wanna thank all of our friends for helping us user testing and also for Jewel for supplying, uh, for supplying us with caffeine and um, letting us work with her. And here's a panorama of our team at Kinney Coffee. We were just taking photos and working and see if you can spot the Photoshopped um, images. <laughs> Thank you. Yay, that was really great, Kinney Coffee. I really liked how much thought that you guys put into every single design decision y'all made from like visual branding to like understanding what your client wanted. I thought that was really amazing. How like everything went from something really broad to something really narrow down to the essence of Kinney Coffee's brand. So that was amazing. So we're gonna open it up to feedback for the audience in the chat. And also if you wanna unmute, go ahead. I just wanna say, uh... Great job to this team. Um, I know like initially they struggled to, you know, find a direction of the project, but you know, the way that the way that they did their project was really customer backed in three different layers because they need to first understand what did their client exactly want, what did their customers want, and what is actually good for the business. So I really applaud this team in really going after, you know, the research and implementing what they learned from their research. Yeah, I wanna add that um, I think, uh, you know, for this team, um, we've, Jenny and I, we've had a chance to see just how much research and thought has gone in. Um, and when you see the output of, of such a clean presentation, you sort of reminded that um, there's a lot of restraint in, in deciding what decisions to go with, whether it be design or marketing. Um, and it's very choiceful. I think that comes through. So uh, great job team with the, with the final product. Yeah, yeah. And I especially love that slide um, in terms of like how you change your focus throughout this 10 week process. Like it's a really short time period, but being able to pivot and change your focus throughout the whole process as you learn um, different things was really commendable. So great job. Yeah, so last up we have Cafe X. So for our power uppers, we have Francesco as our UX researcher, Minnie as the UX designer, Fiona as the visual designer, Shad as the web voter, Camille as the content strategist, Nathan as the marketing and content strategist. And for our mentors, we have Eric, who is a UX researcher at Skylight, Jean, who's a senior originals marketing manager at Hulu, and Joanna, who's a marketing campaign analyst at the Walt Disney Company. And by any means necessary, Cafe X can take it away. Hello, so we are the Cafe X team from Design Cold Power Up. My name is Francesco Medina, and I will be starting off by introducing our primary stakeholders. So Cafe X is a Black woman-owned co-op coffee shop dedicated to serving its local community and uplifting communities of color. Over the past 10 weeks, we have been meeting with their wonderful owners, Cynthia and Kia, to carry out the three deliverables, a website integration, a reopening plan, and a social media strategy. 
So currently, Cafe X has two websites, a main one for their business and another for their e-commerce store. We conducted usability testing on four users who were all first-time visitors of the website and did not know nothing about the business. Some users described their first impressions of the business as a space for discussing issues and politics that affect the Black community, as well as a space for Black artists. It's more than just ca a cafe. The promotional video and tagline on the homepage allows first-time visitors to immediately get a feel of who Cafe X is, what their values are, and what their purpose is. Or usability testing indicated that users had a preference for a single website instead of two separate websites. They wanted to see more photos and information about the events and community, what food and drinks were served there, the physical space, and much more. For the e-commerce store, some users expressed that there was a lack of clarity while navigating through the store due to the navigation bar, which did not resemble conventional standards of a shopping experience. Thus, our solution to solve this challenge is to improve the access of information on Cafe X's website by integrating their product releases, events, and community involvement onto a single platform. To begin, we did a competitive analysis comparing the websites of Cafe X and other food and beverage businesses to see what features we could implement on the new website design. We noticed that some options were an online order or menu at the website, getting involved careers, volunteers, and et cetera. Um, hosting community events, which Cafe X does, transparency about the production process or products, which was not necessarily there, and shop on the main website, which is something that we were going for. Next, we made a rough user flow of what the new website looks like with the shop integrated onto the main site. In the lo-fi prototype, we changed the navigation bar to better highlight core aspects of the business and the customer's interests, as well as condensing um, certain sections in order to integrate the two sites. So we asked each user what they expected to find in each of the tabs, which are about events, get involved, media, and online store. All our users had similar responses, which means that these label names are familiar to the users and validates what content we plan to add for each tab. And since the shop is pretty small, we simplified the filters so that they were more broad and simple, such as coffee and merchants. About half of the users used the filters at least once in some way. So if the shop were to expand with more products, the filters would be really helpful. And then next, we compared two different versions of the product listing. Version one allows you to toggle between two elements, uh, the description and detail, which while version two contains a collapsible accordion card layout that, dis that displays description, details, and shipping. We wanted to improve the display of this information since our users did not notice it as much on the original website. So all our users um, preferred version two since it was more noticeable and organized and felt more inclined to view the information. So um, after our lo-fi prototype testing, we created a style guide for the website based on tone words that we created as a team driven by Cafe X's core values, expressive, empowering, black owned, authentic and community driven. The orange color used here is for call to action buttons to highlight information on the website. And we also chose two fonts, Helvetica New, and um, as a strong and bold visual font that matches with the empowering tone word, and Junicode, which provides a more elegant and homey feel that matches with the expressive tone word. For the Hi-Fi prototype, we made some changes to the navigation bar. About became about us to specify that the tab is about Cafe X's background and culture. Online store became um, shop to provide the user with a call to action. And we also completed the drop down menus for each of the tabs to give an idea of what content could be added in the future. Next, we worked on the shop filters. Um, we added a 3D hover effect. Um, this was a stylistic decision to provide the user with a unique and artistic creative experience when visiting the website. And we found that it fit well with the refreshed visual brand identity of Cafe X. And then for the product listing, we made some changes. Um, we separate the description and product details and shipping and return policy into their own individual accordion boxes. We found that this would make the page feel less cluttered and uh, make each of the boxes feel like distinct pieces of information. And then finally, um, we, for the add to cart option, we added responsiveness to visually show, that, show to the user that um, an item has been added to the cart. 
So the button would change from add to cart to adding to add it to cart and an overlay pop-up of the shopping cart displays after to validate their action. So this is what we worked on for the website integration. And next we will move on to Nathan to talk about the reopening plan. Hello. Next slide, please. So Cafe X is currently preparing for a grand reopening in a new location. However, as their physical space is not yet open for business and they have not yet revealed the new location on their media channels, there's little to no customer awareness of their opening. So how do we address these issues? We want to drive foot, as much foot traffic to their new physical location as possible. We want to increase their brand outreach and we want to increase engagement overall. And so through our secondary and primary research, we found that up to 45% of first time customers discover coffee shops through a physical location. Because of this finding, we wanted to increase Cafe X's opportunities for exposure as much as possible. And so pictured here is an example of some physical signage that we would implement. This is the form of a banner that could be hosted up in their storefront at experiential events that they host, such as like coffee tasting classes, at their soft opening, at farmer's market booths, and at co-marketing events. And this would increase both their foot traffic and their brand outreach. And following location and word of mouth, Google was the third most common way that customers discover coffee shops. For that reason, we decided to invest into Google paid ads, specifically on Google Maps. This will work through proximity-based Google ads, promoted pins, and priority search results, and would also increase foot traffic and their brand outreach. And so next, we want to turn towards their online uh, reach and engagement. And because of this, we decided to look towards Instagram influencer outreach, such as Black Foodie Finder and SD Coffee Network pictured here. And these would be like two examples of Instagram accounts that we could reach out to. And because of that, we would also be utilizing Instagram paid ads and Yelp paid ads. Yeah, but we don't just want customers to come once and just never come again. So to develop customer loyalty, we decided to increase engagement through rewards programs, feedback surveys, email follow-ups, and more Yelp reviews. And so pictured here is like a sample email that Cafe X could send out and customers could leave a Yelp review in exchange for a free cup of coffee on their next visit. And also pictured on the bottom section of the email is an opportunity for customers to join their loyalty rewards program. And by doing this, it aims to make customers both feel heard and appreciated while increasing the chance that they come back to Cafe X for another visit. And so this is just the budget breakdown. The budget was a total of $250 and would accumulate for a total of 94,200 total impressions. And the physical signage, which is the banner would be $100, Google ads 60, Instagram 60, and Yelp ads $30. Now we will discuss the social media strategy that we have created. So our team was tasked with creating a strategy for Cafe X that would help them increase their social media presence, both now and in the future. And to put it briefly, this was accomplished by taking a content first approach, where we first began with creating content guidelines and then outlined new tactics to improve their social media engagement. After meeting with our stakeholders, we found the main challenge of Cafe X's social media management is that only one person handles their platforms while working two full-time jobs. And so the business lacks time, manpower, and capacity to carry out a full-fledged social media plan. To help them with this, we addressed each of the three pain points and created a solution for it. To address the first pain point, our first solution is to have community generated content where employees would essentially handle social media posting. By this, Cafe X would require their employees to post at least one Instagram and Facebook story each day, which may include posts of drinks they're making or story polls. Furthermore, we have also curated a list of best practices on engagement. For Cafe X to beat that Instagram algorithm and make sure their posts appear on other social media feeds. This solution is meant to reduce the business owner's heavy lifting on being the sole people handling their social sites. And by explaining the strategy with their employees, they'll be able to have a consistent presence on social media and work with their employees to generate new ideas. Moving on to the second pain point, we thought of creating graphic templates for Cafe X to use when they would post 
their content on social media feeds. So here are some examples of the templates created by our visual designer, Fiona. And these templates were created for Cafe X to have a cohesive visual identity. As seen in the left image, they often post screenshots due to lack of time to create graphics. And as seen in the right image, a template was made to allow them to create visually appealing graphics easily. Finally, to address the third pain point, our solution is to create a social media strategy guide outlining how Cafe X can schedule posts, track analytics, and update their strategy. As a first step, we proposed Cafe X to use Facebook Suite as their main scheduling tool. This is because it's free, has the most number of scheduling capabilities for Instagram and analytics ready. One downside, however, is that the interface can be overwhelming and confusing at first, and so we created step-by-step -step tutorials for Cafe X to navigate this. Next, we broke down analytics into three simple metrics, followers, post reach, and engagement rate. We believe these three are the most significant metrics in understanding if Cafe X are reaching new customers and if current customers are engaging with their content. To accompany this, we also included an analytics tracker to help them collect and review data over time. And lastly, to allow Cafe X to build their capacity for social media management, we have introduced things like a brand tone of voice and copywriting best practices, an introduction of a content generation platform, and content variation and tailoring tips. Next, um, if we had more time to continue this project, we would continue building the website and further consult with Cafe X. We would then we would also prepare varied ad iterations, set up specific campaign budget parameters and provide ad copy. And finally, tailor strategies for organic content according to each social media platform, as well as hand off our documents. So that is it for our presentation. We would like to thank our mentors, Eric, G, and Joanna for guiding us throughout this 10 weeks and the entire Power Up team as well. And last but not least, we would like to thank Cafe X, Kea, and Cynthia for everything and their amazing business that we hope um, our deliverables will help increase uh, engagement and reach. Thank you. Oh, you guys are so awesome. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Love you all. Our team was the bomb. We enjoyed working with each and every one of our team members. Um, it was really an experience and you guys gave us so much um, to work with. We were struggling with you know the two person engagement thing and getting those templates and stuff is really gonna help us out a lot. So we appreciate you guys so much. It's beautiful work. We appreciate you all. Thank you. I know, right? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I think you guys did a really, really great job of not only thinking about the customer journey, where they can find Cafe X, what they might be interested about Cafe X, but also like you flipped it on its head and thought about the business owners and how they would tactically approach executing all of these things. So lots of amazing thinking, and I'm so proud of you guys. Really great work. Yeah, plus one to everything that was said before. I really love how the slides and presentation turned out. I also love how you described the user research process and how it provided justification for some of the design decisions you all made. And I also just wanted to give a team props for how well prepared everyone was every single week. I feel like every week I showed up to the mentor meetings there were so many new things that they had to show us and so many questions to ask. So definitely appreciate that. Um, it was a great, great pleasure being your mentor. Sorry, I would also like to add on just really quick. Um, yeah, it was really great working with you guys and um, everyone had really great ideas and it was really encouraging to see how collaborative everyone was and how everyone worked together so well. Um, everyone was so resourceful and um, yeah, it was really great working with you guys, super proud.
All right, if there's no more feedback, um, we can move on to the finale of this final showcase. So first of all, congrats, Power Uppers. You all powered up. So to wrap things up, we have some final next steps and closing remarks. So first, um, you guys can check out the Power Up website tomorrow um, to view the final case studies. We're gonna link it all there. And you can also view the showcase recording there. It's gonna be at powerup.ucsddesign.co. And another thing, the Medium articles about um, the students' experiences and also some mentor experiences will be published this Friday and we'll be sending it all in Slack as well. And finally, like some final, final next steps um, for the teams, uh, just fill out the final feedback form by Friday at 5 p.m. We would really love to hear your feedback on how Power Up was to you guys. Um, so yeah, that's the link below bit.ly slash power up dash final dash feedback. And finally, hand off your final deliverables to your small businesses. Yeah, so here's a link and here's another link. Yeah, just echoing. Thank you guys so much. Um, thank you to the power uppers, the mentors who gave their time. Um, you know, you guys all have very busy lives and jobs. So thank you guys so much for helping to guide our students. And thank you so much to the small businesses who you know, trusted us to help you guys, you know, carry out some of your design and marketing needs. We're so appreciative that you were able to work with us. And yeah, if anyone has any final thoughts about your experience for Power Up, we'd love to hear them. You can throw them in the chat or unmute. Um, I just wanna say that it was so, so, so great hearing and seeing all of your final projects. Um, planning Power Up has been long and hard, but it was so rewarding to see all of your guys' um, you know, final deliverables. And I was tearing up seeing how great you know, the, the clients love your work, how much it's going to um, impact them. And I can't wait to go visit all these stores once I'm back in San Diego. So thank you guys. Hi, I just, uh, this is uh, Monique, the uh, owner of Blendies. I didn't get a chance to thank uh, the team that we worked with over the past 10 weeks. I um, individually want to say thank you. And as a team, what I really appreciate is that what I was noticing is that the ease of working together and just anticipating the needs of one another really encouraged me and showed me an example of how wonderful and, and successful team uh, can be when you work together. And um, I also want to say thank you, team, for uh, not taking me serious and, and seeing me all over the place, but really trying to uh, be there and, and show up every week and um, laughing with me and at me uh, through the process that definitely uh, kept a smile on my face. And um, I just wanna say thank you. I'm so grateful for all of you, not just for my business, but for all of the businesses, um, all of the time and effort. As we went along in our process, I just began to realize how much I didn't know about marketing and how, how much help I really needed. So. Uh, this opportunity came at such a time where um, I needed it the most. And so um, me and my team um, are definitely going to implement this and really like make you guys proud even over the years. And you'll see how we've implemented and take this uh, uh, steering wheel and just like drive this thing till the wheels fall off. So just thank you all so much and wonderful idea. And I just hope that the time you uh, uh, put into working with all of our businesses is reciprocated in, in some kind of way. So thanks again. Any final words before we head out? <laughs> We can play some music while everyone heads <laughs> Honestly, one last thing. I kind of wanted to take this time to thank the organizers of Power Up. Um, honestly, doing Level Up last year was absolutely chaotic. And 
um, you know, it takes a lot of work to organize something like this. So thank you for taking the extra time to find small business clients who um, we could impact as students, even while we're students. Um, and this has been like a great project for all of us and a great learning experience. Yeah, thank you. Showing me all of your art. Either we go together or we'll fall apart. Every day is hard, but I get through it. Doing laundry, listening to music. You got my hoodie, but you can use it. I got six more, and they keep me warm just fine. I'm learning to be with just me. Up in my head, it gets scary. It haven't called you back in weeks, but this is the first time I'm carefree. Feeling this bad, never felt so great. Never thought I'd be happy today. Still be friends though. Feeling this bad never felt so great.